Long time since I've been in this part of the area. Now I'm at the Grove. Now, before I start today's video presentation, let me get some things um, situated. First of all, I am a YouTube content creator that makes YouTube videos. Now, I don't expect everybody to like my videos or everybody to hate my videos. But what I do expect is for you to use this and stop using your feelings and your emotions because there's something you don't like that you don't understand. See, every man and every woman on this planet Earth wants respect. Think about it. Today, I'm going to make a good, a good video. Before I can get to that good video, I have to first give out some shout outs. And before I can even get out to the shout outs, I got to clear the tension in the air. Now, a lot of people do not like that YouTube video called Sex Game Asian Women in Television and Film. I can see why if you're a black woman, I can see why. If you're a white woman or a Latino woman, I can see exactly why you don't like the video. But ask yourself one question, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Do you want some respect? The answer is yes. When you go to work, you want your co-workers and your boss to show you some proper respect. When you get mad or triggered when someone makes a YouTube video, it's for that audience. And when I make videos for y'all, it's for the audience who watches that video. Basically what I'm trying to say in the nutshell is, use your intelligence and stop using the feelings and the emotions to be angry and upset. It's okay to be mad that something didn't go your way. I mean, do you have any idea how many times I've done YouTube videos and the camera just cuts off and then I have to film the video two or three hours later because the cell phone gets too hot? Sometimes I got to film the video at a park. Sometimes I got to film the video inside the house. It's okay to be mad and upset about something, but when you get mad for the wrong reasons or you get mad for no apparent reason, it's just very stupid and very delusional. That's like I get into an argument with my dad and my dad asked me a simple question, how come you spend too much money? And before I can give him a very intelligent and logical answer, I just go into a rage and say A, B, C, and then he look at me like I asked you a question, how come you spend too much money? And when you can't come up with a very intelligent answer, then you don't really get angry or no, or, or you don't get angry for no apparent reason. You have to have a very good intelligent reason. And you can't say that I made the video because of A, B, and C. You have to actually explain your case on why you don't like something. Because if I hear you just don't like something because you just don't like something, then it goes in the category of being very stupid and very delusional. That means you're not using this. The Most High gave you a brain. You're supposed to think intelligent-wise. If your car breaks down, you go to a car mechanic. If your house gets on fire, you call 911. But you don't get mad for no apparent reason or because there's something you don't like. There's a way to express it. That's why I say give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You know, let me know if you like the video or you don't like the video. But when you get mad at a YouTube content creator, we take that as you're just being stupid and very delusional and in your feelings. You use your feelings to express how you feel good or bad, not to take your anger or rage directly out on a person because you have a hard time understanding. By the end of the day, everyone wants respect. It's always good to be acknowledged. I mean, how would you feel if you worked seven days a week for six months and your boss never showed you no appreciation? Start using this. Come on, you, you have a brain for a, a specific reason and deep down inside in your heart, you know I'm telling 99.99% of the truth. You know I'm telling the truth whether you want to hear it or not. The reason why people call me an asshole is because I always tell the truth. That's how I was raised. That's how I was born. I wasn't raised to lie. I was lied to tell the truth. Sometimes the truth can be nasty. Sometimes the truth can be hurtful. But by the end of the day, the truth is the truth. Some of y'all may not like the truth. Some of y'all want a nice side to the truth. I was raised to tell the truth, not lie. If I lie, then people will disrespect me because I lie. I tell the truth. You may not like the video, it's understandable, but don't ruin a good thing for everyone else. It takes one bad apple to ruin it for everyone. 
Sometimes we make mistakes as YouTube content creators. And sometimes we do very good. I didn't say I was perfect. I didn't say I was invincible. I do make some mistakes. Like two days ago, my dad asked me a simple question. And I told you this. He asked me why I spend too much money. And I react the same way you guys react. Very emotional and didn't use this. And my dad told me, anytime you speak to any man or any woman, when you don't talk intelligence, when you don't talk highly intellectual, no one's going to give you a conversation. And if you guys act like that, I won't give you no intellectual conversation. All it takes is one bad apple to ruin it for the whole bunch. There are people that want shout outs because they want some respect. You're going to be the reason why people don't get the respect that they deserve because you got in your feelings because of one YouTube video. You guys get videos all the time. My job is to make sure every man or woman walking on this planet gets respect and some type of credit. When you go to work, ask yourself a question. How much hard work you put into your craft and you want respect from your boss? And if your boss shows another person too much respect and don't show you no respect, you're going to take it personal. Put it into that perspective. Use your brain before reacting on emotional impulse. Emotional impulse doesn't always help you like you think it does. Now, the shout out, the first person that gets a shout out is the most high. Now, I was walking yesterday in the area and the most high pointed me out. There's two dollars. I got the two dollars. The most high told me you're going to go out today. And you're going to make a YouTube video, and even though I didn't do absolutely nothing wrong, you're going to apologize to the people who think you offended them and done something wrong. So when the Most High tell you to do something, you do what the Most High tell you to do. There's no back talk. There's no arguing to the Most High. We're here. I am a man of my word. I'm here. I found $50 today. The Most High gave me the $50, so I got some more money. So I want to say thank you to the Most High, because the Most High is the one who created the heaven and the earth. And if the Most High bless you with money, you've been blessed. Obviously, I got the money for a reason. It's to put it to good use. So you got to say thank you to the Most High. So he gets a shout out. He's Before anyone gets a shout out, the Most High comes first. He gets respect first before everyone else. I was also raised to go to church and acknowledge the presence of the Most High also. Now, the second person to get a shout out is a mysterious girl that's very shy. Now, this past week, she called my cell phone. I mean, she's very extremely shy. We didn't really speak, but she did call because she did see my YouTube videos. And I want to say thank you for watching my YouTube videos. I appreciate somebody who watches my YouTube videos. I don't expect everybody to go on Facebook or go on their cell phone and hit me up a text message or call. I don't expect nobody to do it. Neither do I look for that. I just make the YouTube videos. Either you like the videos or you hate the YouTube videos. Hold on. Now, like old Sam, that was the fire the fire trucks. When it's a serious emergency, you're going to hear the sirens, so I apologize for that. Like old Sam, I want to say thank you to the individual who called my cell phone. I appreciate that. It's people like you who give me the motivation and the confidence to make good YouTube videos. And because you made a good YouTube video, I will give you another shout out in a video series called Thank You to Everybody. I haven't really exactly wrote the script yet because there's a lot of people I have to say thank you to. The next person I want to say thank you to is this black girl that I saw on Crenshaw that was driving her car. It was a light-skinned black girl. She wanted me to give her a shout out. She watched the video. She actually followed the rules, watched the video, and tell me if you like the video or if you hate the video. So she actually followed the rules. So thank you. It's a very physically, sexually attractive black girl that's light-skinned. Um, the next person to get a shout out is a black girl that opened the door for me at Panda Express 24 hours ago. Um, that black girl opened the door when she did not have to actually open the door. She opened the door, and that's why we're making the title of this YouTube video. The show, Black Women, Some Respect and Some Credit. 
So thank you for opening the door. Then there was another person, and that was a bus driver, a black man. It's a bus driver. So I want to give my man a shout out for basically, um, basically saying hi to me getting on the bus. He liked the video. I appreciate that. I have people who work for the MTA that I used to go to high school and college with, and they watch all my YouTube videos, good and bad, and they'll be the first person to let me know if I did a good job or if I did a shitty, poor-ass job. They'll, they'll actually tell me face-to-face -face and say, hey, bro, I like the video. Yo, bro, you need to put some more work into that video. Or, bro, I wouldn't say this and that or in a video. They'll, they'll be the first to tell me. Then there was a security guard on my way to the Grove that, um... That said hi to me. So I know this older gentleman is like in his late 50s, early 60s, and he saw my YouTube video. So I have to say thank you to the security guard that works four blocks down the street from the Grove. Thank you to him. Um, there's a lot of people that are getting shout outs in this video, so I apologize if this is a long and lengthy YouTube video. But you see, I, gotta, I have to say thank you to all these people. We got a lot of people we got to say thank you. There was a black guy who saw me at the bank. And he said hi to me because he saw my YouTube video. I have to say thank you to him too. So thank you for acknowledging me at the city, city bank here at the Grove area. So that's, a, that's like two black men, one white guy that's a security guard. There was a black girl on Crenshaw. There was a black girl at Panda Express that opened the door for me. There's the mystery caller. Then there's the most high. So there's a lot of people getting a whole bunch of shout outs. You see how many shout outs I gave to a lot of people, right? The more you watch my YouTube videos and the more I get motivation and confidence to make these videos, the more I show you respect back in return. You show me respect, I show you respect back in return. If you don't like the video, all you gotta do is go in the comment section and say, why you make that video? Why you make that video for that particular audience? Think before you act. It's not all the time I make those types of videos. Everyone deserves some kind of respect and some kind of credit. There are some people who work their whole entire life and nobody says thank you to them. There's people who don't get no respect. Like people at Subway, I have to say thank you to the people at Subway. So when, I make, when they make my Subway sandwich, I have to say thank you. Now for those that felt like they might have been offended by that video, even though I don't think I did nothing wrong, the Most High wants me to apologize anyway. And when the Most High tell you to do something, you do it with no questions asked and with no back talk or you'll get disciplined by the Most High. So for those that feel like I might have offended them in the title of the video, I apologize. That was not my intention to make you feel bad about yourself. My job is to make sure everyone gets some kind of respect, some type of admiration. Everyone deserves some respect and credit. Everyone deserves to be acknowledged. Doesn't matter if you're black or white, Latino, Asian, Indian, Samoan, doesn't matter what your race and background is, everyone deserves some kind of respect and some kind of credit. So I apologize that we've been going on and on in the video, but I had to give out a lot of shout outs in this video because the Most High told me to give people a lot of shout outs. All right, now on with the video appreciation. This one is for black women, so it's a well-deserved video, and it's going to be called Sex Game, the Top 11 Sexiest Hot Older Black Women. So this video is for black women, okay? So no one get angry or upset or highly offensive. This video is for older black women, because I have older black women who watch my YouTube videos. Oh, yes. And they'd be the first one to walk up on me and say, young man, I don't like what you said in that last video. Trust me, I, I have some older black women that watch all my videos, good and bad. So coming in at number 11 is Tyra Banks. Now I told you in all my last three videos, I have a big crush on Tyra Banks. I liked it, Tyra Banks in the 1990s, um, the early 2000s. I found her very physically sexually attractive. Now that's my daddy's crush because my dad always talk about how fine Tyra Banks was back then and today. He would buy the magazine with her on the front cover when she started modeling and keep it at a, co a collector's item. Every man, when they're in high school, college, they, um, they um, have a magazine of a beautiful, attractive woman that they have beside their bed. This is when my dad was like in college. And when he started working at the post office, 
he had like two different covers of Tyra Banks. And of course he had to hide them from all the girls that he was dating because he didn't want them to find out his crush was Tyra Banks. And I told you guys in my last video that fast forward, I would say some 10 years later when I was in college, my best friend was a music producer named Richard Charlie Kaysen. God rest his soul, rest in peace. He um, took me over to Tyra Banks' dad's house in Inglewood. Now, at first, I thought he pulled a practical joke on me because I thought he was just, you know, pulling the joke on me. And when I met her dad, he laughing, Richard laughing. I'm like, what y'all laughing about? And they like, oh, he don't know. And I'm like, don't know what? And it wasn't until he took me back home and bought me some, you know, tacos from Taco Bell that he was laughing like, you just met Tyra Banks' dad. Who you think's cars in the driveway? Like, it took me three days for the, for, the, for the feeling to kick in. Like, I actually went to my dad's crush's parents' house. Like, it took that long. Like, when I told my mom, my mom, like, you didn't know that? I was like, when celebrities live in certain parts of California, it's temporary and then they move to a new location so you never think in a million years you're ever going to see anyone that you see in the movies and the television shows i mean she's kept her body she stayed in athletic shape she eats her fruits and vegetables she drinks a lot of water and she basically stays away from trouble like you can't find her at the nightclubs and bars getting in the fights with women half her age she pays attention to what goes on in the news and media Ed and Tyra Banks have two television shows. And I don't have to tell you what those shows are because they're well documented. But she has two shows. And, of course, she does some acting. And she's a producer of those shows. And even in her 40s, guys still find Tyra Banks physically sexually attractive. There are some men that are into older black women. Despite these stupid pickup artists and dating coaches that keep telling you um, you need to date women from the age of 18 to 27. Some guys like younger women and some guys like older women. So if you guys are into older black women, this YouTube video is for you. Everyone's welcome to watch this video. Men and women, young or old, black or white, everyone's welcome to watch this video. I do not discriminate on anyone of any sex, any race, or any religion of background. Understand? Coming in at number 10 is Salantha Lathan. Now, she's like a very physically, sexually attractive black woman. Now, she came in the late 1990s, I mean, 92, 93, 94. But it wasn't until she did a movie called The Best Man, where she was playing the love interest of Tag Diggs. With Morris Chestnut in it, Nia Long, all them people, um, Terrence Howard was in that movie. And then she popped up in the sequel, The Best Man Holiday. And then she, then she surprised the hell out of me. She popped up in a movie called Alien vs. Predator where she got into great athletic shape and she kicked ass. Now, this woman wasn't in her 20s. She was like 35, 36 when they offered her the role and she took it. Like, she put this on her resume that I can kick ass. And I actually found that very physically, sexually attractive. Like, she proved... That just because I'm in my 30s don't mean I can't do no action-packed movies. People thought the movie was a fluke. And then you fast forward 10 years later, she did a movie called The Perfect Guy. And again, she showed at her age, she still looks hot. And that she can still do an action thriller or suspense thriller whenever asked to do. So she has a long body of resume of work. Television, film, you know, some theater. And the fact that she gets hit on by a lot of men... And her got men in her 20s and their 30s and 40s that hit on her when they find out what her age is. She has this nice glow in her face where you can tell that she takes very great care of her body. Like she actually takes very good care of how she looks. Like she also stays away from the fast crowd. And that's why she's lasted for like two and a half decades. And she's still getting work which is impressive. Coming in at number nine is Jim P. Jim P. P. Hansen. You've seen the movie Baby Boy? The girl who played Yvette? And then she played in the TV show called Empires. And then she was on another show called Purchase of Interest. She's what they call a multi-talented actress. Like, she can play any character of any genre. You say suspense, she can do it. 
You say dramatic acting, she can do it. That one movie two years ago where she got a nominated for two Academy Awards. I don't know if she won an Oscar or not, but she was in that one movie with um, Hollywood actor legend Kevin Costner. And that movie got number one at the box office, and she played like the main character who kind of solved the mathematics equation for the astronauts during the time of, you know, the, um, they call it um, the race to outer space. She was in that movie, and the movie was good. Um, and she shows she could play different characters, and she's good. She has a huge acting range. That's why you see that at her age, she's able to, like, kill it. Most women her age are playing supporting roles. She's getting in roles that younger women get. So it's amazing that she's taken serious in Hollywood. And my cousin has a girlfriend who knows somebody at a hair salon that personally does her hair. So, yeah. And plus, I watch all her movies. You know, Baby Boy. You know, she was in that movie. Then she was um, in Hustle and Flow. Then she did the television show where she's portrayed as Cookie. See, everybody started watching the show because of her. Like, there's Terrence Howard, but you pay attention to her mostly. Coming in at number eight is Lark Voorhees. This actress, she came in the 1990s. If you've ever seen TV shows like Martin, she was on Martin's television show. She was on The French Prince of Bel-Air. She was on The Jamie Foxx Show. She was even on The Steve Harvey Show. She, like, she probably on a lot of these black sitcom television shows. And then she got her breakout role in How to Be a Player, where she got to jack up Bill Bellamy's character in the movie. She also was in National Security with, who else? Martin Lawrence. Now, she's tall. She's light-skinned. She's very physically, sexually attractive. She looked like one of those exotic models. She did start at modeling. Then she broke into television and film. Then she did something else that most actresses her age don't do. That's real estate and housing projects. And she went back to school and got her college degree and then actually did what people say she wouldn't do. That's in real estate. So she's doing just fine. And people know her from the movie How to Be a Player because that's like her best breakout movie role. Um, and plus, I went to high school with a light-skinned girl that kind of remind me of her. So, yeah, that's why she's on the list. Like, that was one of my crushes in the 1990s. Everybody has a crush. All right, then at number seven is Tamika Jones. Tamika Jones has been in the game for like two decades. Now, you know some of her movies when you see it. She was in The Brothers, you know, Shaman Moore, uh, Morris Chestnut, D.U. Hughley, Bill Bellamy. She was in that movie. She was in uh, Two Can Play That Game. That's just two movies that she was in. Um, then there was a sequel to Two Can Play That Game. And then she popped up in a movie called um, Next Friday. Yeah, if you remember Friday, then the sequel, she was in that too. Remember Day Day? And Craig, remember the sequel? Yes, yeah, she was in that movie too. To me, she's like a very funny mix of a dramatic actress and a comedian actress. Because she has the style with huge acting range. Now, they don't give her enough respect and enough credit. Because they just see her as eye candy. But it wasn't until later in her career that she popped up on some television shows that showed she has some acting range further than what we thought she could do. Coming in at number six is Muhammad Ali's daughter, or granddaughter, that would be Tati, Tatiana Ali. I'm not even saying the first name correct. I apologize for that. But you got a last name, Ali, you must be the greatest of all times. She's been in French Prince Bel-Air. If you remember French Prince Bel-Air with Will Smith, Carlton Banks, you know, there's Vivian. Remember that TV show from the 90s? She was basically the daughter of the judge in the television show. Now, she was very hot in the 1990s. Been in a lot of movies, television shows, did some modeling. She even put out four albums. And it's just a shame that nobody really thinks about her in that high regard. Like, all these new girls that you see... In a way, she kind of was Zendaya before there was Zendaya. Like, all the stuff you see Zendaya do now, she was doing it. And a lot of times, 
when she does get mentioned, they always talk about her best portrayal as the daughter of the judge from French Prince Bel Air. But she too was in the movie called The Brothers. So she's been in a bunch of movies. All right, coming at number five is my mom's all personal, all favorite, Vanessa Williams. Now, Vanessa Williams is what they call a genre actress. Because no matter what the genre is, she can transform into that character in front of your very eyes. Like, she went to drama school. She did acting in high school and college. And then she became Miss USA. And then there was that scandal that took her title. To me, you didn't have to take her title because she never got to defend her title. So that was like a disappointment. But um, other than that, she's a great actress. Soul Food was one of her best movie portrayals. She was in Soul Food. She got to be in Hoodlum with um, Lawrence Fishburne. So that was a good movie. So she's basically been in a lot of um, movies and things of that nature. So she's someone I think might have won an Oscar. I'm not too sure if she didn't. It's, it's, it's a disappointment and a tragedy. Um, so there's always that. Now coming in at number four is Nia Long. Now Nia Long, I think it's my cousin's crush. And I forget which cousin of my mom's side of the family have a crush on her. But Nia Long has been in one of these movies where, where, um, where, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Where she's been in a lot of movies. She's been in, um, one of her best movies was The Best Man. Best Man Holiday. And then she popped up in some television shows. Yeah, she's pretty, she got pretty good acting range. Pretty good acting range. Coming in at number three is Ilsa Neal. Now, I've actually met this woman two times at the Grove. That's why you see I'm at the park when I was a security guard at Top Shop Top Man. I was a security guard once upon a time, and she came in the store, and she had a censored on her purse because she had bought a brand new purse. And guess what? I had to take the censor off her purse. Then I found out before she got to the door, there was like another censored on her other purchase and she's a very nice black woman very physically sexually attractive in her 50s got an athletic body and you should have seen the look on a lot of women's faces when when um when um when um they were in their 20s it was like they were intimidated by this woman because They asked me, who was that you was talking to? And I said, y'all don't watch Hollywood movies of her? They was like, no. I was like, go watch the movie How to Be a Player. She was in How to Be a Player. Like, she was in um, Scream 2. I know it's like 20 years ago, but she was in those movies. She was on a television show called All of Us, um, which was produced by, who else? Will Smith. And she also appeared on French Prince of Bel-Air, the Jamie Foxx show. She appeared on those television shows and movies. And Carcino, who's a big-time YouTuber, has interviewed her twice in the past four years. That's Carcino's crush. And I actually got to meet Carcino's crush not once, but twice. Like, I actually spoke to her twice. So she's like a very nice actress. She's not like all these other actresses that are all stuck up and don't acknowledge their fans. She acknowledges everybody. She don't care if you're tall, short, black or white. You could have a learning disability and she will say hi to you. And guess what? She was a very nice person and thought I did a very good job and told me nice haircut and keep up the good work and... You know, there's always that nice turnaround smile. Like, she actually turned around and smiled. Like, literally smiled. She has a good smile. You can see why Carcino like her. All right, coming in at number two is Halle Berry. You cannot do a video without mentioning Halle Berry. My auntie will probably hit me upside my head if I don't mention Halle Berry. Now, Halle Berry is like every black man's crush. Some men love them some Halle Berry. Now, unlike my dad, when I got a hold of a magazine with Halle Berry on it, I would actually hide it under under the bed. Of course, your mom's going to always find out what what you're doing all day, every day. Yeah, there was a lot of times where I got my ass whooped. Victoria's Secret magazines, magazine with Halle Berry on it. Yeah, there, there were some times where I got my ass whooped. I mean, come on, I was like very young. 
So you, you kind of know why. Her movies, Swordfish. She was in a movie called Baps, which shows she could do comedy. And then she got to be in um, a James Bond movie. She got to be in Catwoman. She got to be in Gothic, which was a sci-fi horror movie. She got to be in these movies. Like, she literally got to be in these movies. And you can kind of see how the complexion goes. And she also got to be in John Wick 3 and might pop up in John Wick 4. Now, I know some guys going to say, but Halle Berry's good for her age. And guys are still asking her out to lunch and dinner, so she must be doing something correct. Now, for the number one person, that is Angela Bassett. It's a tragedy that this woman's been in the Hollywood game for three plus decades and still has not snagged an Oscar. All that talent, all that God given talent and skill, and yet no one seems to give her an Oscar. All these movies, Waiting to Exhale, I know some men hate when I say that in the title of the mid video. Women love Waiting to Exhale, black men hate Waiting to Exhale. You don't believe me? You go ask some black women, black women will get the smile when they hear Waiting to Exhale. A lot of black men hate that movie. And when I say hate, I mean a lot of black men hate wetting the exhale with a passion. As soon as you mention it, playing basketball, as soon as you be in the gym, the bros be like, all right, I ain't talking to you no more. What I said, dog? You heard what I said, I ain't talking to you no more. Now, you tell that to a black woman, a black woman be like, you my best friend forever. Uh, you don't believe me? Just say it and see what happens. That one, I'm not bullshitting you. She also played in the movie called Tina Turner. And I mean, she transformed and to Tina Turner. Like, literally turned into Tina Turner. In fact, some people thought Tina Turner was Angela Bassett and Angela Bassett was Tina Turner. And both of them kind of looked at the people like, okay, now, there's that movie. And then there's, you know, of course, she was in the Black Panther. She was in um, one of the Mission Impossible movies. And for her to be doing all of this physical activity of her age just shows you that she doesn't let anything or anyone stop her from kicking ass and taking names like don't be surprised and black T black panther part two or part three they make her character start displaying some martial arts because all those characters know how to do martial arts and she knows that because she reads the comic books and she also voiced her own character when it was produced by Marvel on BET, she voiced her own character in the animated cartoon series of Black Panther. So just imagine, you get to voice the character, and then you turn around and you get cast for the same character that you voice. She has a huge range of acting. There's no limit on her acting ability. And this one woman is in her 60s, and men still find her physically sexually attractive. I mean, she does have to sometimes turn down guys in their 20s and 30s because they're too young. I'll probably be one of the guys that get turned down because I'm too young because I'm, I'm obviously 34. What I'm trying to say to you is she should deserve at least three Oscars. I mean, come on. You don't be in the game for this long and don't snag an Oscar. At least 